Okay, in this uh, section we're going to continue talking about um, angles. And we're going to talk about angular speed and linear speed and dimensional uh, analysis, something that will help you in your science classes for sure. Uh, angular speed, let's, let's look at it like this. Suppose you have a wheel uh, that's spinning. Uh, and this is the central angle theta. The angular speed, omega, is a measure of how fast that um, central angle is changing with respect to time. So the units might be radians per second or revolutions per hour. Whereas the linear speed, think of the linear speed as say you had a point on the outer edge of this uh, wheel as it's spinning. They're asking how many feet per second is, it, is, this, is this point moving along the circle as it's spinning. So they're different. They are, of course, re related. Uh, now look, look at this. Suppose instead of a point on the outer edge, we had a point that's like halfway out in the radius here. Then it turns out um, it's going to have a slower linear speed than the point on the outer edge. And the reason is because this, this point halfway on the radius only moves this distance when a point on the outer edge has to move this entire distance here, see? Anyway, so it's going to have the same angular speed but a, but a, a smaller linear speed. This, this point here would have a smaller linear, linear speed than this point on the outside. Okay, anyway, so how are they related? Well, it turns out that uh, since s equals r theta, the linear speed, which is, which is the change in distance over time, you could replace s with r theta, and you get that, uh, that that, remember theta over t is what we call omega, that, that's the angular speed. So, um, so we have that the linear speed is equal to the radius times the um, angular speed. And that's kind of what I was talking about, right? The linear speed, since the radius is bigger, is going to be uh, more than the linear speed here, because it has a smaller radius. Interesting, huh? All right, take a look at this example here. Okay, take a look at this example. We want to find the speed of the minute hand of a clock in radians per second. The minute hand is this hand right here. It travels one revolution every uh, hour, every 60 minutes. So all they want us to do is convert revolutions per minute to radians per second. Okay, this is how we do it. We multiply by ratios of one. This is called dimensional analysis. So we first of all are going to convert uh, revolutions to radians. With the, one revolution is once around would be two pi radians, correct? So the revolutions cancel, and then all we have to do now is uh, convert minutes to, to seconds. One minute is six, 60 seconds. The units cancel, and you have, um, uh, you have um, pi over 1800 radians per second. That's not very fast, is it? Whereas now, we're going to ask the question, uh, let's find the linear speed of the minute hand. Okay, well now what we're going to do is convert the angular speed which is one revolution per hour, one revolution every six, 60 minutes, to linear speed, inches per minute. And the, the key idea there is one revolution, not only is it two pi radians, it's also the circumference, isn't it? One revolution has gone two pi r. So notice how the um, revolutions cancel and you have minutes, you have inches per minute, pi over five inches per minute. So it's amazing how simple that becomes when you just look at the units. In this problem, we have a car that's traveling 60 miles per hour and we want to find the angular speed of the wheel. Well, the key idea here, you may have to think about this, the speed at which the car is traveling is equal to the linear speed of the wheel. That's really important. Uh, because we're not skidding or anything, the linear speed of the wheel equals the speed of the car. So this is the linear speed of the wheel as well. All we have to do is convert linear speed to angular speed. And the way we do it, we want, we want to convert miles per hour to radians per second. So we're, we're going to convert miles to feet, then we're going to convert feet to inches, and the key step, remember, we're going to convert inches to radians. This is how you do it. You have the circumference, you want to cancel the inches. You've gone the circumference when you've gone 2 pi radians, okay? So that, there's the key. Now all we have to do is um, convert, um, uh, let's see, hours to minutes and minutes to seconds. Your final answer, 1.4 times 10 to the ninth radians per second. Kind of nice. Let's do another one. This one, uh, we have this winch that, that's moving. It's, it's, it, it, ro ro it rotates two revolutions every eight seconds. Okay, that, that's the angular speed, right? Two revolutions every eight seconds is the linear, is the angular, angular speed. It's a 12 inch ra radius w winch. And, and it's, the question is how, how fast is this object being pulled up? And that's a, we want that in inches per, per second. The key observation here is that the linear speed of the outer edge of the winch is equal to the speed at which the object is being pulled up. And the reason is because it's not sliding or anything, it's not, it's not, it's not skipping. 
All right, so all we have to do then is convert the angular speed of the winch to the linear speed of the winch, and that will equal the speed at which the object is rising. The way you do that, of course, is you want to convert revolutions to inches. One revolution, you've gone the circumference, the units cancel, and you have six by inches per second. Okay, let's keep on going. All right, suppose um, well, the question here is, um, find the linear speed of a point on the equator of the Earth as it rot rotates. Now, it, the Earth, rot it, the Earth um, rot it, it rot rotates one revolution per day, okay? So, so that, that's the angular speed, isn't it? And they want us to find the, uh, the linear speed of a point on the equator. That's important, by the way, because as we said earlier, uh, the, the linear speed of a point on the equator is going to be much more than, a linear sp than the linear speed of a point in the north or south, isn't it? All right, so all I have to do is convert revolutions per day to miles per hour, and this is how you do it. The, the key step is, how do you convert revolutions to mile? One revolution, you've gone the circumference, so then you, all you have to do is convert days to hours, and you got it. 333 pi miles per hour. Okay, let's do next, this next one. This is kind of hard, I think. Um, we're talking about a bicycle wheel. This is, this, is, this is the pedal sprocket here, and this is the wheel sprocket here. And we're given that the, the cyclist is pedaling at 60 R, RPMs. That's 60 rev, revolutions per minute. So we're given the angular speed of the pedal sprocket. It turns out the key observation here is, is the, the linear speed of the pedal sprocket equals the linear speed of the wheel sprocket. You may have to think about that a little bit, but, but, that, that, but, that's, but that's the key step. The linear speed of the pedal sprocket equals the linear speed of the wheel sprocket. Reason? Because the, the chain doesn't slip, right? The chain is, is, is fixed, so the, the, the linear speeds are equal. It turns out the ang angular speeds are different, though. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to, um, first of all, uh, convert the angular speed of the pedal sprocket to the linear speed of the pedal sprocket, and note that that, that equals the linear speed of the wheel sprocket. Then all we have to do is, is convert the linear speed of the wheel sprocket to the angular speed of the wheel sprocket. So it's, it's kind of evolved. How do we do that? Well, 60 revolutions per minute is, is, is what the, you're pedaling at. If you convert that to linear speed, the, the key step is you've gone one revolution every 2 pi times 6 inches. So the, uh, so the rev revolutions cancel and you have 720 pi inches per minute. Now remember, that's equal to the linear speed of the uh, wheel sprocket. How do, you, how do you find the angular speed of the wheel sprocket? Again, the, the, the key step is one revolution, you've gone, uh, you want to cancel the inches, you've gone 2 pi times 3 inches, and so that, that says that the, the wheel sprocket is actually traveling uh, twice as fast. It's traveling 120 rev revolutions per minute. So that's, that's, there you go. Now, how, what is the speed of the bike? Well, to find the speed of the bike, all you have to do now is um, convert the angular speed to linear speed of the bike. And the, the key step is, in one revolution, you've gone 2 pi times the radius. I believe it's 14 inches. Yeah. And if you do that, you get 10 miles per hour. Nice, huh? Last one. The question here is, through what angle does the wheel of a car revolve in 5 seconds if you're going 30 miles per hour and you have a 15-inch Remember, if it's 30 inch diameter, that means the radius is 15 inches. All you have to do there is um, is is uh, convert seconds to radians. What? Five seconds. Uh, if you if, if you convert that to hours first, and, and you're traveling at 30 miles per hour, at this point we have um, miles, and then if you convert miles to feet and feet to inches, and then you have inches to radians, your final answer is 176 radians. Nice, huh? You could also convert that to rev revolutions by multiplying by one revolution is 2 pi radians. So there's your answer. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.